Yeah, I see the display okay. says recording. Okay, good. We're getting going now. All right. Uh, since we're all here, I'll go try to go things through things kind of quickly. Um, I wanted to first bring everybody up to speed on on the, what's happened. There's been two council meetings that I've been at since our last time we were together, and uh, I also listened in on a hard meeting. And I was invited to general government meeting, so I wanted to update everybody on that. Um, we obviously have no applicants tonight. Um, uh, first thing I wanted to update on is on the from last time, give you the update on what happened with the applicants after our our meeting last time. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, good. Um, first of all, on the eighty-five. West Afton, um, they uh, have not gone before council yet, but what happened, what I found out happened in the interim, just happened a couple days ago, is some neighbor, neighbor dimed them out, called, D, called DEP to complain that they were, they had, uh, you know, they're moving soil around and they're doing work without uh, permits. Um, so supposedly a cease and desist order was issued to that to the, the guy there, I forget who his name was. Um, and uh, I guess code enforcement's getting involved. Uh, do you guys recall when I brought that this up and when we had them in front of us, I brought up about the trees being cleared. Didn't the applicant say, oh, it's less than one acre, so I don't need those permits? Wasn't that his answer? Anybody recall? I do not remember. I don't recall that specific yeah. statement, no. Uh, anyhow, so I, we'll see what happens there. I feel kind of bad about it that we should have, you know, uh, I don't know. So shouldn't the code enforcement officer occasionally drive by? I mean, everybody in town drives by that location. Shouldn't code enforcement have kind of picked up on this? Well, you Instead said DEP D comes down. You said DEP. It, it sounds like you're referring to a problem with uh, DEP. I don't know that the building construction official would consider his jurisdiction. Uh, well, there. Well, yeah, but the zoning board. Yeah, but they're, they're supposed to know whether what approvals people need before they could do work on their property, right? Yeah. Bob, do you have an opinion know. about that? Yeah, they, they, I mean, they should know because uh, usually when you just disturb soils on this, on your site, yeah. you do need a, depending on the, the uh, size of it, it's the disturbance, you do need a permit. And that's a permit from who? Uh, well, I work mostly in New Jersey, but it's a, it's called the soil erosion, soil erosion and sediment yeah. Yeah. control. That, that'd be under the jurisdiction of the borough though, you think? Uh, no, that's a, in New Jersey. It's a separate entity. Right, right. That's what I was wondering. I mean, DEP is a separate state entity uh, in Jersey. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it right. works in Pennsylvania. Anyhow, so that project is on hold. So, uh, um, well, then uh, on the other, does that sorry, does that put his subdivision on hold? I mean, is it? I don't know. Well, well, he didn't go to council. I've been I've been to both council meetings since. I expected oh. him to be in there. Okay. With council, you know. I mean, I would so, think he probably could schedule himself in front of council and. Oh, yes, actually, and... I take I take that back because it ended up he wasn't getting any variances as they all ended up. You know, no. Uh, his, his subdivision got approved because Paul had me go in to sign off the print, and David Bria signed off the print. And, hmm. Yeah. So I think this was after after that. I see. But. Um, anyhow, you're right. So I think that that's where that one stands. And then the the sushi place, um, they're going to go before the zoning board for a special exception uh, to uh, you know basically try to you know convince them, like they tried to convince us, that they should be able to uh, use the shared use some of the shared spots in Buttonwood plus spots that are there at night between them and the fences. So, um, 
So that's what Paul said what they were going to do next. Um, then it's uh, at, at last, it, this Tuesday's meeting was uh, uh, quite the meeting, to be honest with you. Um, the, the big topic of discussion was La La, La, La Lobster. Did you all notice the bright blue painted buildings downtown? Yes, yeah, they did. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you do. <laughs> some people love it and some people hate it. So, uh, what was the discussion uh, at council? Um, oh, yeah. And at a two hour long hard meeting a couple of nights before council. Uh, um, what uh, apparently hard has no jurisdiction over colors uh, uh, in their charter that they, they are not. <laughs> which is strange. Most towns do, you know, they have to approve colors, not, not in our borough. Um, so, uh, so the issue was not only the, the, the brightly colored building, but also the, he, he brought an English style phone booth, red phone booth he put out there and yes, I don't know, a lighthouse and some other external props. Um, and, uh, so, uh, there was, significant discussion at uh, at Borough and he was there um, but he's um, he's standing firm that that's his brand and uh, he's not violating anything and that that's all true also was yeah was there any uh, discussion about ordinances uh, in violation or no Nothing. there's no, there's no ordinance in violation there aren't, there aren't any that are in violation okay so uh, so going forward, you know, obviously they're going to want to look at uh, potentially putting that in colors as part of the hard decision criteria, but uh, um, they can't do it retroactively. And, you know, this guy's, you know, they can't change it after the fact. Um, so anyhow, so... Uh, because if that was the case, then the mayor wouldn't ha be able to have a pink house, perhaps. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's not the only odd colored house around. You're right. Uh, so anyhow, so that was very uh, uh, interesting. Uh, the other thing that uh, that happened that I think some of you were, I know you were all aware of it, that, that was the... Uh, 123 South Bell. Um, uh, the, the zoning board hearing that was on Facebook in case any of you had seen it, but uh, I, I saw it and it ended up being denied the, the request to put two buildings up on two lots. Uh, Has that been before us? One that's in the floodplain, right? Well, we discussed it because it had uh, it had cropped up on Facebook. Somebody posted the uh, the notice that was sent to the neighbors about oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was going, you know, what was going on and everything. And uh, but we we officially had nothing come before us. And if I recall correctly, also we. Um, there was discussion of why didn't they come to us first? Okay. Yeah, but I remember now. Yeah. I don't think it technically had to come to us because it, the belief from the owners, he had two lots and it was, it wasn't a subdivision uh, issue. Um, anyhow. Um, was the basis so, for the denial of the application, the floodplain ordinance? Well, it basically, um, the, the, the real issue was um, they were totally unprepared. He was, he was poorly represented by his lawyers. I mean, the first 10 minutes was trying to figure out what were the plot numbers of the two lots involved. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was very vague about what he was going to build on there. And yes, he would raise it, uh, but it was uh, the zoning hearing board, particularly the chairman, was getting very patient, too, because he, he, he didn't appear to know 
what he was going to do. He gave no details where there will be driveways, you know, all kinds of normal questions. There were mm-hmm. no prints. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the boroughs, the boroughs angle was showing this documentation, which obviously I couldn't see from watching, but basically that said they believed that those lots were really, they were two separate lots, but then they were joined together as part of a ongoing thing they were doing where small lots, if they're owned by the same person, they kind of merged them as one. Um, I don't know if you guys had ever heard of that, but uh, so yeah, they their claim was, excuse me? It's consolidating. <clears throat> consolidating, right, yeah. So the borough's argument was those lots have been consolidated. So if you want to put up one home, you know, demolition, demolish the existing home and put up one home, that would be considered. But uh, if you want to, you got to go go for subdivision to get the split into two lots if you want to do this thing with two homes. Uh, so then obviously it would come to us. Uh, so, so, so they denied it. They never even got around to the floodplain ordinance, it sounds like. Well, yeah, not really. Now, I think had they come there with a clean, we're going to demolish that house and we're going to put a house on that lot up in the air, I think they would have, you know, with all the proper setbacks, you know, uh, one house, I think it would have been approved. What was the width of the two lots combined? Do you know? Or each lot, do you know how not, long they were? Not off, not off the top of my head. Okay, they're probably sub. They're probably undersized, and that's why they consolidated them. You know, they mm-hmm. had a at one time oh, they, yeah. they had a lot of thirty and forty foot and fifty foot lots around the borough, but the zoning for uh-huh. years has been seventy five feet. So they, whenever they can, I think they just try to uh, make conforming lots. Mm-hmm. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. But uh, Matt, consolidation. Sorry, consolidation like that is a process like subdivision, right? You you go and you get your paperwork in order and you apply, right? Yeah, yeah. You'd have oh. yeah, you, yeah. They don't do it to you. Yeah, it doesn't get done to you. You you apply for it. Okay, that's all. That was my question. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, but it was it, it was still somewhat confusing. A lot of people were confused because. I mean, he just bought the property back in like November, or December, or something, and he said, "I bought two two lots." You know, they said they're two parcel numbers, so I don't know. Wouldn't you think if it was consolidated, it would have called it one parcel or something? It would have been one parcel, yeah. Yeah, they would yeah. have. It would so be the, tax records for sure. Yeah. So it sounds like sounds like it's a little bit of a mess. <laughs> Yes, so it does. he's disappointed. I don't know where we go from there. Uh, I'm asking you. So, so that was uh, <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, and then the other thing, and this is another one that we had. Remember last year? I assume it was last year. We had the uh, parking lot expansion at ML7 up there behind the firehouse. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, they got some real problems back because of the erosion control or whatever that they uh, that was on the plans. There's a dispute on whether or not the contractor did it per the plan or not. And downstream of there on a property back there, there's significant erosion. And supposedly, I didn't go look at it, but they said several trees have collapsed into the creek back there. And it's getting worse and worse. Um, and so there's a big uh, dispute with uh, the dispute is really between the contractor and the owner there, the ML7, because mm-hmm. uh, ML7 thinks the contractor didn't do it right. Um, meanwhile, people downstream are getting are getting, are getting impact. It's pretty serious. So, so they they put a motion out to put him in a violation notice against them. So that at least it'll be pushed quicker for them to resolve it. 
sounds like it's kind of a fence back there too. This this all occurred at the zoning uh, hearing uh, board meeting. No, this last one I told you about was that it was at council meeting last night. Council Sorry. meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. The zoning board meeting was just the. Uh, yeah. Uh, the. Um, South Bell thing. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Um, okay. Uh, the other thing going on, um, the Pico lot. It looks like. <laughs> They're not going to waste their time putting in for the Pico grant uh, because Pico won't even respond to the to the offer that the borough made on the lot, and we missed the window for the grant application. So we were only going to buy the property if we got a grant of money to cover it. So since we missed the grant window, another year is going to go by and nothing will happen. But uh, most people doubt anyone else would buy it anyway. You know, I don't think they even have to. Burr doesn't really even have to own it because they control it anyhow. You know, it's controlled. I know, exactly. I know. I think we should do nothing. I think do nothing is the right answer. <laughs> uh, anyhow. Um, and then uh, on uh, phase two of the North Main Street sidewalks, uh, they're getting ready to get commitment on the utility poles being relocated. So they're out measuring for them. I saw the guys out there the other day. So, uh, anyhow, so that's sort of moving along. Um, I guess that's, that's about it. Oh, the other thing that's of interest is the, you may or may not know that in the release bill that was passed, the 1.9 trillion one, you know, that was passed, the last one that was passed, well, in there is money ear earmarked to all kinds of state and municipalities. And so Yardley Borough is getting $248,000, um, which is pre pretty significant amount of money. Um, when I asked what they're going to spend it on or what the – they were still – it was only the day after they had been notified that they're getting the money. I think it has to be somehow COVID relief related. I don't know. Uh, the only thing I do know is that you can't take the money and take the money in your borough and then reduce your taxes. <laughs> they actually wrote that into the bill that no one who takes this government money can reduce their taxes. Mm. Anyhow. Yeah, I read uh, that. Yeah. So I'm not sure at council meeting last night, no one asked or no one commented on how they're going to use the money. Um, So, yeah, that if, gets if, the pretty idea, much up if the idea is to stimulate the economy, then they want you to spend it on something. They don't want you to withhold right. further spending. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. So, um, but, you know, it's a good, it's a good problem to have. Hopefully we can put it to use. Um, I think... I think it's going to be pretty loose, loosely related. It's easy to tie anything into it, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, like, like even if they did anything outside, you know, if they, you know, did something down by, did an improved, improved area down by the uh, Delaware River, or, you know, that helps walking outdoor COVID outdoor exercise. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they can make. They can do whatever they want with it, probably. How about um, the second they couldn't use it to fix those backflow preventer abortions that we have in our neighborhoods? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That would stimulate <laughs> the, the economy. Way, the only way to fix them is take them out, except yeah. for one of them. Uh, but beside the point, maybe they could put a second floor on the uh, parking lot in Buttonwood there. <laughs> <laughs> Run out the spaces no, so, the so they can socially distance their cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two hundred and forty thousand will buy you a, a couple of uh, elevated spots. Not not very much, I don't think. How many? <laughs> or, or how I'm about uh, get you probably the engineering work? <laughs> so, or how about EV charging stations? 
Yeah, yeah. See, that's a good one. Yep. Although that, there's going to be money for that in this next infrastructure bill. That's yeah. That's what I've heard. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Um, let's let's hey, move on and clean up. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Excuse me. By the way, I'm uh, I'm trying to connect on with my wife's computer, um, so you may see another request from Chuck Dolan at Verizon.net. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, I see it. I'm sorry. Yeah. It says admit. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. We'll see if that gets you. in. Yep. All right. Let's do uh, clean up a little the business of the meeting. The mean minutes from last time, as I told uh, most people at the beginning, uh, we had a recording secretary for that for that session where we had the two applicants. So. Uh, so I just reviewed what she had wrote, written down on the two projects, et cetera. And uh, uh, does anyone want to make a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the minutes. I would second it. Okay. All right. I assume any, any discussion anybody needs about those? We've kind of talked about them already in the follow up. Okay. Uh, so let's just bear with, bear with me. I gotta. Um, Bob uh, made the motion, and Matt and all. All. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're all set now. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the other thing that happened is on March 16th, I think I put this in email to you guys, but March 16th, I was invited to the general government's meeting. And there, Caroline Thompson is, they on their own were reviewing the comprehensive plan. So I basically said, why don't we, you know, make sure we're not duplicating efforts here. Um, and so, um, what they want to do is they want to make sure that as they prepare their financial budgets, start, you know, going forward, that they incorporate, you know, the key things from the, from the comprehensive plan. And so we got into a discussion on, on the topic and what they were, are, are asking us is asking us as the planning commission, where do we think, what areas of the, of the comprehensive plan, do you think, do we think council should be working on or that we should be working together on? They're really looking for three items that we might uh, think we should be working on. And what, it, to me, what I did is I, I said, let's step back for a minute and, and we're a year, what, seven out of 10, I think of the, so we still two years away from the new comprehensive plan. Um, and up until now, it seems like most of what we've done in the first five or six chapters is clean up where there were errors in the, in the, uh, in the document, you know, or, or things that have changed in the document. Um, I'm suggesting maybe we pause for a minute. Each of us, we look through the, the strategic, uh, for the comprehensive plan and say, all right, we're year seven out of 10. What's been done? What, what was in there that they said they wanted to do 10 years ago that has not been done? And then ask ourselves, should it be? Is it still in, light, in line with what we think should happen? And if so, you know, how do we, you know, stimulate council to go down that path and get her done, you know? Um, or, are there things that have changed significantly um, and uh, and we think should go in a different direction? In other words, I'm saying let's let's put the move the discussion up a level because if we, if we spend our time cleaning up all the the errors and the things that have changed in the document, we're just going to do it again in a year and a half. Things that we put in there now, that data and stuff, it's going to change by the time we go to print on this three years. So why not work on the more higher level conception 
actual part of it and what things we think should get done from the last plan um, as a way to move forward. So I, I, I welcome your guys' comments on that. Um, and then I'll offer up some areas that I think we should work on. But what do you guys think? Well, get, get rid of the overlay um, transit um, zone. I think that's number one. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, I think you're getting the audio on both of your devices there. We're getting an echo. Okay. Yeah. You got to mute one of them. How's that? Um, that's, that's better. The, Bob meant the TOD, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's what he was overlay, referring to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Transit overlay. Actually, I think we got rid of it all. Well, in the markup we're looking yeah. at, uh, it, it is uh, marked up. Uh, I noticed. Yeah. I, I happened to go to that uh, transportation uh, chapter, and somebody's already had a crack at it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, if I recall, we did that a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, Don, I'll, I'll uh, chime in. There's oh, two TODs. There's transit oriented district, and then there was the another one that Trans the transit had. overlay. 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 And they were different. I always thought it was a misunderstanding that. Uh, the to what TOD stood for, but uh, well, in the in the document itself, it was the transportation oriented district. But what Borough Council tried to do, um, namely, uh, um, uh, Mike Ruddle, Mike Ruddle, and and Catherine Cadwallader were were the two people in the in the meeting when I complain um they they referred to it as the transportation overlay yeah that's what it says and that was ne and the overlay was never in the uh the comprehensive plan but the transportation oriented district was and i was under the impression that we did remove a lot of that anyway so i'm looking at page 10 on chapter 9 and and it's just as as Chuck says, the transit oriented development is still defined there. Um, and then it goes on to talk about a transportation overlay district that council endeavored to put forward. It was noted that uh, it was responded to negatively by the citizenry and and they withdrew their proposal. Anyway, when we get to transportation, we definitely should should have another crack at that, and and maybe we want to acknowledge that as a as a high priority. As one of the areas, like Don was asking. Yeah. But the uh, one that I, I would like to go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to second your idea. That it seems like a really good idea to, if especially if this uh, is this group a subset of the council folks, the councilors. Yeah, yeah, general government. It consists of uh, the, um, Caroline Thompson, Matt Curtin is on it too, the two council members, and then it's it's basically uh, Paula and Patty. I think that's it. I think that's the four people. So it's basically people who run the government, the town of borough yeah. government, like that. Okay. All right. Well, so good. I, I especially if if there's another agency, uh, another group focused on it uh, we we certainly want to coordinate our efforts um i, I would right. suggest along the lines that you're talking about that we uh consider uh, in, in fact if if you're inviting us to take a look at a section and try to decide what we think would be a uh, uh worth a, a specific effort i'd probably myself would be inclined to go and have a look at the goals because when I joined, I think we kind of had had already breezed through um, 
uh, goals and, and uh, I never really felt like I had a crack at it. So I'm going to probably take a look at goals. Mm -hmm. And it seems like if you identify and update goals, then you are in effect steering efforts uh, for the remainder of the document too. So yeah. that's uh, yeah. just my two cents. Yeah. See, I wanted to look at things that are identified in there that were identified, you know, seven years ago mm -hmm. that maybe there hasn't been that much uh, progress made on in that direction. And then challenge it, you know, let's, let's talk through it. And my, my, my number one one is parking, okay? There's lots of talk about parking in there, but other than adding the spaces in Buttonwood, which is good, that was one of the things that was identified. But, um, you know, that's, and I know council is, is keen to review it. Um, so to me, uh, I think parking is an area that, should be focused on. I think there's some ordinances that need to be changed. The, the whole the whole issue we had with the sushi place, um, those calculations, um, you know, whether you include active work area, whether you have different calculations for restaurants, I don't know, it's just, there's just a lot of question marks. And uh, from what I understand, Paul gave me all this documentation that back in 2009, there was a whole task force on parking that went and assessed everything and matt you were on this team do you remember being on this parking uh yeah that was group a long time ago and and that was really well, it was a couple of, of things that were the focus of it one was to try and get all the lots on the west side of uh, and both sides of main street for that matter to to, yeah. uh, to join each other or at least adjacent lots yeah. and share the parking yeah. And then the other thing was just to have shared parking everywhere and all the big lots as well and not have those signs anywhere, you know, reserve parking. And also to, you know, get owners and employees to not park in front of their stores mm -hmm. and uh, take up all the parking, which is, uh, was another th thrust of it. And we did, sir, you know, counted all the spaces. There's plenty of spaces. It's just that they're not in the right yeah. place or they're not, you know, just not utilized properly. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and there's, you know, territorial things uh, that prevent that too. But people don't want to walk either in town. You know, they used to come to my office, get in the car, drive across the street to Wawa, and then, <laughs> and then, then drive up the street to Kramer's. I mean, it was unbelievable. <laughs> That is bad. But what was the what happened at the end? Did they did they, they analyze what here are all the here's where all the spaces are, which ones are allocated where? But was there a recommendation to council to? I, to, I don't remember. To tell you the truth, I don't. I don't think it went anywhere because the only person that would uh, the only two lots that actually would even remotely communicate was Borough Hall and Wawa <laughs> by putting in that walkway between them. And also they actually entered into an agreement uh, where they actually are, there is sharing there. And Wawa pat, uh, patrons can park at the borough and vice versa. And that was actually part of an agreement. And, uh, but that and was the other side too, to the annex, to the annex so that people can park at night in the annex. Uh, okay, that didn't. That wasn't. Uh, that wasn't part of it at that time because um, oh, okay. annex was being used by the rest by a, a business that was uh, utilizing all the parking. You're talking about the annex. But, but the today, that's one of the the annex building is one of the few places where after five anybody can park there. You know. And I think there's plenty of businesses on the west side of South Maine that should fall into that, at a minimum, fall into that ca same category. Which building are um, you talking about, the annex? Yeah, what is that? I think it's called the annex. I'm sorry, not the annex. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing you guys. Uh, the building immediately to the right of the borough hall. 
That's the post office. Uh, but you're thinking of the, the community, community center, center, maybe. The community center, sorry, the community center, not the end. Well, that's, that lot is owned by Cam Troilo. And uh, that's only usable now because they only have two small tenants who don't use it at all. But uh, occasionally it's used by whoever uses the uh, community center. But there was a time when there was a realtor in there and they put up signs everywhere and they were towing cars like you wouldn't believe. And uh, they wouldn't let the community center use it or anybody else. And at one point they actually, Mac, two times they towed their own customers' cars out of there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you want to buy a house from them, huh? No, that's why they're not in town anymore. <laughs> Former customers. Yeah, yeah. That, that woman was yeah. rough. I forget her name, but boy, she was something to deal with that had that agency in there. But, uh -huh. So, it, you know, if Cam gets a good tenant in there, that lot, because anything could happen with that lot, we don't know. It's, it's just but according to Paul, they have an agreement that after five, that anybody could use it. Oh, that, so that, that may have been, that way. That may have transpired. Yeah. But, you know that. Yeah. If another tenant gets in there, and that could go away too. Yeah. So, anyhow, when I when I when I look through the the uh, comprehensive plan, you know the things that stick out to me that I think I've seen a lot of progress on in the last seven years is one of them is that parking. The other thing is uh, uh, access to the towpath and clear access to the towpath. I mean, I'm learning now all the different places that we have easements and are able to access the towpath, but I don't think it's, it's very well uh, publicized, very well marked. Um, Anyhow, and those are things that were identified in the comprehensive plan too. Um, that haven't well, some of that it, uh, falls upon um, private property too. Like uh -huh. you have a a clear pathway uh, to get on and off the towpath at college, but at Letchworth, for example, that's all private property, and um, the one the the property that's north of of that actual bridge has no trespassing signs and the one on the other side you know both have gullies that you would have to literally go onto the people's property by more than five feet just to be able to access those uh you know get on and off safely yeah it's not safe no matter how you do it there at letchworth you know especially if you're pushing a bike or a baby carriage um, no, you can't do it. No. A are, are either of you are either of you suggesting that there's some uh, right away that exists that's not being respected, or is it just you'd have to take some action to buy some property or or buy an easement to in order to make that happen? Well, I think at Letchworth, you'd no matter what, you'd have to do a lot of uh, construction to put a little bridge in. I don't think that's a good place to send people. Yeah. College, I don't know what the, the, you know, it's right along the road. I don't know what the the right of way, you know, if it expands, extends into that area or not, or if that is. Yeah, she's, she's got her, uh, she's got her yard fence, but that doesn't mean and that's the property line. Yeah, I don't know how that one works. I don't either. Yeah, I, I think it may be a common access way. Um, but Mrs. Bell is pretty nice. And you know, even if it was her property, I don't think she would mind people, you know, walking on it as she doesn't, you know, uh, I, I think that's actually, uh, if not anything, a grandfathered access point. Yeah, yeah. it actually might be by law. You're right, Chuck, because after so many years of it being uh, public access like that, it becomes that. Oh, yeah. right. Right. And then, and then even down at, at lock, what is it, lock five there, you know, uh, behind the, uh, right. down that's here great. almost to the train station there. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, open. That's you, can, I, you can use it, but it's not signed. You wouldn't know it was there, certainly. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I, when I go down there, I'm like, I feel like I'm going into somebody's driveway, and then, it, but I know it's allowed. Anyhow, it's just it's just not very clear as to what are the allowed places and what aren't. You know? Yeah. No, and the so. the path to the Mary Yardley Bridge is something like that too, isn't it? I mean, it's sort of concealed. Yeah. Yeah, I lived here at least two years before I even knew it existed. I finally stumbled on it. Yeah. So. Um, and I suppose I know, you know, a are, lot of the a lot of the neighbors that, who abut or adjoin those features are just as happy not to have it be publicized. Exactly. That that it's kind yeah, of a local sure. knowledge kind of thing. Um, yeah, I know. But. I know. Um, but uh, you know that. that I don't know. It was something that was identified in the last plan. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when we think about whether it should be in the next plan, they talk about signage and, and even from the train station, you know, point to people out of town, how to get to town, where's the town. Uh, there, there isn't much signage out there, um, but maybe that's on purpose. Um, and then the other, the other one that, that I think they should spend more time, time on is uh figuring out how to take advantage of the of the river area you know mm -hmm. uh, access even to the uh, river i think is something we've talked about yeah yeah uh, so uh, but but i would uh, i would like I if you guys you you... about uh about access to the river area because you know um I guess the only true access other than private property would be the property that's at the end of each of the roads that um, are, are across the street of it, basically. Yeah, so, street, street ends. Right. But yeah. the whole problem is that uh, if that was advertised, <clears throat> there could be uh, some kind of an issue associated with uh, – liabilities and I'm just thinking out loud because uh, last year I only had to I only had to grab five people um, from my boat as opposed to others but um, you know that could potentially invite people to have the idea that they could use those as for example swimming areas on hot days Right. Just like they have problems with up at Washington's Crossing Park, at the boat launch, um, you know, all over the place. So we, I, I'm concerned about liabilities if we were to um, make it more public knowledge that these street end areas are technically accessible areas. Yeah, I wasn't thinking so much of the street ends because the street ends are so chopped up, you know, because they're obviously not a continuous thing. But when you get across from what's the name of the field there near the near the funeral home that we we acquired not too long ago, Fitzgerald's Field. Yeah. Fitzgerald. There's even a better place to go down to the river across from the uh, the old rescue squad there by the monument. You know, that's actually ramped for a ferry boat. And you can actually get down there without breaking your neck. Yeah. So. Well, I think these are all, I mean, you know, I think the pluses and the minuses are something that uh, we would invite comment on. I mean, certainly there's public, public, public safety concerns, uh, no doubt about it. But there's also, uh, you know, uh, public access and, and enjoyment of those features, too. So. I wouldn't dismiss those ideas um, out of hand. Right, I agree. And then, and then the other one is the whole question of down near the the railroad station. What kind of development, if anything, should be down there? You know, they got this nice new, they, nice new railroad station now. Um, but should there be encouraging of any? commercial development down there, or is that a no-no? Well, what are you talking about? You know, they they took the Reading uh, Avenue property and put that on the, the no-touch list. 
and that's about sure. it. And so the rest of it, I mean, the Legion could get reused or something, you know, but there's no place else to expand it. Uh, is the bank is the bank in the borough? Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, those two properties together, somebody wanted to, you know, combine that and tear it all down and put a shopping center there. That was actually part of that uh, Ruddle deal, the transit overlay district, you know. Mm -hmm. You see, they tore, uh, took uh, Marazzo's out and they're developing that property over yes. in Lower Midfield. Yes. Yeah. We actually saw the plans for that about a, uh, at least a half a year ago. Marazzo's? Yeah. I think that was around the time when somebody uh, had the plans for the expansion of the Yardley Inn with the second floor dining on the on the roadside and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, I remember speaking, speaking of that uh, Yardley Inn outside dining, you know, a car went into there and tore out the tables and everything. And luckily oh. nobody was there at the moment. Is that right? Wow. Really? Yes. Dangerous. Into the tent area or the little patio that's right near the across from the patio, monument? The little patio. Oh, the little patio. Yeah, right on the corner. Yeah. Wow. wow. There are people on it today. Were there? When did that, when did that happen, Matt? Oh, it was a couple months ago. Hmm. Oh, because I, I saw people out on it today. Oh, yeah. It was in the fall. Uh, people were out there, but they had gone in and the car, I don't know exactly remember how it happened, but the Car went right into it, smashed the hell out of things, did a lot of damage. Yeah, you can imagine how it could happen, certainly. Wow. Yeah, I mean, after all, if, if a garbage truck can take out Starbucks or, you know, another vehicle took out uh, the, the Contab back last year. Sure. Uh, Don, did you talk to uh, Caroline about any uh, sort of means of collaboration over this topic or or um, just left it well, that you ought to do something? What you, what you asked first is for us to come up with what do we think are the three things in the in the uh, plan today that, that we think council okay. should focus on in our the other thing that they're doing, the reason she's looking at it is, is, you know, their capital improvements. And this is where I talked to them about this too, is um, if you look at their capital improvements, it's usually, you know, uh, stuff for the police department or it's, you know, fix the roof on the annex. It's like maintenance kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously the matching grants for the sidewalks and for the, redoing the Afton and the main there. Okay. Those are, I guess, more what I would call traditional capital improvements. Um, but uh, making sure that the, as they put that when they put their capital improvement plan together, that it incorporates what's in the yeah. comprehensive plan. You know? And it supports the comprehensive uh, plan. That makes sense. Yeah. And there's a and there's a balance of not just replacing worn out computers or you know you know not just the traditional maintenance items, but maybe something uh, different. Uh, you know, maybe there's some way that they can stimulate these. Uh, um, the connection of parking lots on the west side of South Maine. I don't know. I, I would like to put that on them to challenge them to do that. Mm -hmm. I think reviewing the parking ordinance should be done anyways. Um, um, and there's a lot of suggestions that have been done. I've got data that Paula gave me that I can share with you guys where someone's gone through and said, here's how they should do the calculations compared to other boroughs. And here's, here's how you should calculate for, restaurants based on the number of tables, not necessarily based on the numbers, square footage, which kind of makes sense. If you think about it, cars per table, is more logical. Uh, 
and then uh, so that everybody doesn't have to always have a, a variance to everything. Uh, so. I, I would I think those are parking, put parking high on that list of three, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Is that part yeah. of the, is that's not really part of the comprehensive plan, is it? Uh, parking? Oh, it's sprinkled in there. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, I, mean, I was just paging through the um, the goals under the traffic section, and, and there's not a word about parking there. But in Chapter 9, uh, I'm just kind of breezing through it to see the word parking. Uh, it's not a whole lot of reference. So mm -hmm. probably deserves more attention, like you say. That's really an ordinance thing, you know? It's like yeah. a sign thing, you know? That's a big issue, too. Yeah. But that's not part of the comprehensive yeah. plan either, really. But honestly, if, if you consider parking to be a resource, a public good, you know, then there's no reason it shouldn't be identified in the comp plan as a, you know, as an ambition, aspiration. I think, I think it's in the comp plan when it's talking about flows and traffic flows and bicycle flows and different, there's, there's stuff in there and about that, I think. But, but let's, you know. Look, look through and see. Uh, yeah. Well, it certainly be what other areas? Visit in, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to see them. I'd like to see them when they put their capital out to have a balance of capital between, you know, basic repair kind of capital. Uh, I don't want to just see all our capital spent on newer and fancier police radios and stuff like that. Uh, let's get. What I want to know is how they can yeah. justify five police cars yeah. and how they can yeah. afford them. The other thing I guess this makes me think about is what chapters don't we have? I mean, are there, are there really any de developments over the last 10 years that have come to the fore that we ought to be addressing that maybe have weren't uh, weren't given much attention um of course i'm thinking about you know environmental regulations uh and energy and sustainability basically that's my that's my answer yeah. to, to my question mm -hmm. and, yeah electric electric cars and everything uh, you know yeah electric yeah. vehicles support you gotta look at you gotta look at the future solar solar yeah. houses solar power well the, 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 yeah i mean if if there's a statement in the comp plan about support for features like that sustainability then then it it'd be easier to have it be reflected in the ordinance right i think it should be in there yeah Both yeah of them. You know, I remember back in the day, uh, Tom had made a real good proposal that I loved. Is that uh, uh, Tom Wells? Yes. Uh -huh. About um, if someone was going to be doing a special, you know, something environmentally friendly, just say electric solar panels. Um, there, he wanted to have a reduction of the permit fee since it was going to green entities. But now I'm thinking about it, and I think some one of the one of the problems was that the uh, inspection organizations have set fees. And it may impede on that or something. I don't remember, but I, you know, I, I always think back at like, for example, I mean, I have solar water here at my house. I'd love to have solar electric, but you know, I'd also really be, have more of an incentive if the borough was giving me some kind of help towards it, even if it's only, you know, 10% off what the permit fee would be. Well, Chuck, 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 we did that uh, after one of the floods. The way the permitting fees are split 
the borough gets about half or 45% and the inspector gets like 55% or basically like that. And the borough was forgiving their half of the fee to help people elevate their houses. That lasted for one or two of the floods, then they reinstituted it, I think. But they could do the same th exact thing again, cut the permit fee basically in half to put solar power on, for example. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, it's a good proposal. Yeah. And uh, I think- right. and, and what about, and if we encourage businesses to put uh, uh, car charging stations, uh, I assume they got a permit to do all that. They got to pay permits to go put a charging station in, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, you need permits, electric permits. Sure do. Yeah, sure. Well, those can be a little tri difficult because quite often, um, you know, you have to have some kind of a metering device. And uh, depending on, you know, where you're getting and how you're getting street power, um, it could involve digging or something like that because, you know, you'd have to have, and, and if we had them set up in, for example, and I'm just using as an example, somewhere in, uh, in the Vince's parking lot, you know, that could potentially tie up those spots, you know, and what do you do if somebody who doesn't have an, uh, an EV parks in it and things like that. No, you're right. Yeah. It's complicated. It's very complicated. Once you bring in the public utility, you know, Pico uh, and uh, the capacity of the system locally. And I know my wife, Ann, uh, was for a little while there was pursuing the possibility of, of uh, trying to establish an EV station here in town. It seemed like the best opportunity was uh, in the uh, Foster's development, you know, their residential development where the liquor store is now, uh, because there was capacity and and was close to the Buttonwood parking, and it, it just seemed like a good opportunity. Couldn't make it happen though; just just too many obstacles. Um, but uh, worth another try, I think. You know, it, there's there's probably other opportunities around town. Yeah, because I mean, even they even have charging stations up at the crossing welcome center. Yeah, yeah, they do. That's right. A state park, uh, right? State park and funded that way. And how do those do those work off of some sort of app? So you you pay for it, uh, you being the uh, customer, pay for it. Is that how it works? Some of them do. Yeah, we have some in our office buildings, and uh, we we actually got the uh, the chargers for free. And then there's an app. There's a company that charges. You get some, and then and then the company gets some money from charging the uh, your car. But, but it, it is works. it works as an app. You just have a credit card or something. And right, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you would think Pico would be out, out front there a little bit too. I mean, they've certainly got a whole lot of parking out there uh, at the, I mean, well, I'm, saying Pico, I, I'm saying Pico, what I meant to say was Septon, uh, was thinking of the train station, but uh, but I don't see any, uh, any uh, EV stations out there yet. Yeah. Well, that might be a whole different can of worms too, because um, I'm just thinking that the, depending on how they get the charge from, because they probably, you know, I mean, their, their machines generate their own electricity within the system. So every time a train is breaking, it's actually charging, you know, putting more voltage and amperage into the network for other trains to be able to use and things. So, and, and if they were to take off that system, um, I'm sure there's probably some kind of federal implications as opposed to them having Pico come in and throwing some stations in. 
Yeah, well, that's pretty uh, pretty far in the weeds, Chuck. Uh, you're probably right about all that, but um, seems it, uh, nonetheless, um, there. I imagine what I guess is going to happen before too long here is there there are going to be a few companies that are making penetration into the market to provide the services to integrate all these things into one one thing if if a, if there's a customer that wants it and if the borough was such a customer we probably could could make it happen anyway it, it right. the mechanism of how we get it done is 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 kind of further down the road what we're really talking here exactly. are, in terms of the comp plan is is a vision right what, what's our vision yeah and then the other thing that I think we're going to be faced with is this uh, dealing with this whole issue of as uh, marijuana laws get passed in Pennsylvania, like they did in New Jersey and many other states. What if? What do we want to do? What, what can, can we do to uh, uh, deal with it in our borough? Got to write an ordinance, I guess. You know yeah. what the requirements are going to be for. Any Set kind up of a big pen out on Foster's Field. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I know, but it's but it's something the borough should get ahead on. Head on. It just seems strange. I don't know, I'm reading all these things in New Jersey about each. Towns now are trying to pass something to go against the statewide law. I don't know how they do that, but yeah. Well, we, I thought we were going, did we get uh, a copy of someone at other municipalities, marijuana law? Yeah, we did. But I guess if we're identifying things that, that we think Council should be working on, you know. Uh, I don't know how, how do the if, 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 you, if you're trying to come up with a new ordinance, who, whose responsibility is it to do that? Is it, it's councils, right? Isn't it, or is it? No, we can suggest uh, a new ordinance, and we can suggest yeah. an addition to the comprehensive plan, like like an energy uh, encouragement, like we've been talking about. Which I think would be a great yeah. to the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Parking and this whole parking and the whole energy thing would be two good areas. Uh, well, I'm about running out of steam here tonight, but maybe if you guys could think. Take oh, another parking. breeze through and see parking. If you parking. So here's uh, uh, just breezing through. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, Tom. In chapter 11, Heart of Yardley, right, is kind of this special chapter that talks about the core of town. There is a discussion about yep. the parking survey and the parking survey boundaries. Right. So if you're interested in parking, have a look at that chapter 11 uh, segment. And uh, that's a that looks like a place where a lot of it's concentrated currently. Right. But when you read through that, when I read through that, I said, "Oh, that, yeah, that's that's a good thing." And now it's seven years later, and I haven't seen many of those done. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's where I'm coming from. Is I'm coming from. If there were things that were in this, this comprehensive plan that seemed good and made sense, but have not happened in the seven years going forward. Maybe mm -hmm. there's good reasons. Budgetary, they were very expensive, grandiose ideas, or I don't know. Well, there could be very valid reasons why they aren't, but. Yeah. Um, but maybe we just need it, to it, renew our effort and uh, double down. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so uh, that's, that's my take on it. But, all right. Anything else anybody want to re review tonight? Or? So what's our homework? We're, uh, we're supposed to come back 
to you with some ideas about our chief concerns and f for development of the yeah. comp plan. Right. It seems, it seems like something. They could look do. through the, you know, you know, breeze through. Don't get more hung up on the little detail stuff, but on the conceptual things that are in there. What are three of them that we think council pay or us, depending on what the, what the issue is, should focus on for the next year or so, you know, so that when we get down to creating a new conference, if only we can kick it all off and look, look all the stuff we got done in the last 10 years. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and if there's something that we want to add in, that's not in there, like this whole energy stuff, I don't think was in there anywhere. That's what, that's an, an adder that mm -hmm. should be in there. And then, you know, I want to take advantage of the fact that they reached out and said, what do you guys think we should be working on? So let's tell them what we think they should work on <laughs> and, and us for that matter. So yeah. Sounds good. I'll make an effort to do that too. And, and then we'll pull together next meeting and uh, see where we go from there. All right. Um, I apologize. I made the mistake of trying to do this meeting from my beach house i'm down i'm down at long beach island obviously my internet down here is uh, cooperating so i apologize for that but, a couple thoughts know. about that don uh, we all uh, kind of looked in your yeah. email and we didn't see your phone number in your signature and uh, i'm going to suggest chuck maybe as secretary could you consolidate you know distribute our phone numbers to each other so that if no you know, that's a good question because I had the same problem, although I did just get Don's number. Um, I'll be more than happy to, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think it would be prudent for me to put it in the, in the meeting minutes. Agreed. Um, no, but it, it, just to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page, if each of you could kindly send me your email address of preference, and your telephone number of preference, I will create a document and have it for us to be able to use later. Yeah, that we could share. That'd be yeah. great. Don't you agree? That'd be great. Yes, I agree. Good idea. And the other thing, Don, I want to mention, we, we were just talking to Paula before the meeting, and she said that uh, Mrs. Taylor is going to join us as a commissioner. Yeah. Susan Taylor? Susan Taylor, yeah. Yeah, Susan. Oh, well, yeah. She was uh, interviewed uh, this week, and uh, I think the council will be voting on that recommendation uh, pretty pretty shortly here. It should be a good asset. Yeah, she was a member for a long time, right, Matt? Not a planning. No, she was on HARB uh, and council. Yeah, HARB. But I don't know. But Jerry, Jerry was the. Uh, on planning for a long time before I, but that was 40 years ago. You <laughs> know, he was just here before <laughs> I was. Okay. I've, I've been, Only half of the time that I've been here. Yeah, I got on in 1980, so it's 41 years. It's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, so we well, might I'm be sure up, sure up to six uh, next knowledge. month. Yeah, it'll be good. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. All right. Very good, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks for being patient tonight. All right. Thank Have you, easy. folks. Have a great week. Good. Okay. And uh, right. it's going to take me a few minutes to get this uh, put together because um, I don't. I. I guess you guys did the pledge of allegiance and all that stuff before me. Yeah, we did. Yep. Yeah. Uh, technically.